So if one is just hearing all of this and is feeling overwhelmed, why do you think people should then go into the agri-sector? It's important. Food security is important. Yeah. We have to... We, we, South Africa is not a food-secured country. Africa on its own, it's not a food-secured country. I mean, a continent. So we, we have to... There's no way that we will pr stop producing food. We, 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 we have to. We just have to. And mm. it's not easy. Just like any other industry. A musician will tell you it's not easy to be in the music industry. I'm an engineer, everybody. Welcome everybody to the Farming Podcast brought to you by Private Property. My name is Mbali Nwoko. Once again, I'm always excited to be doing um, this podcast because I learn something new time and time again. And today we're joined by a farmer based in Dawung, a small town, a small village. I believe it's in the northwest. Um, I know Dawung to be synonymous for barley farming and uh, he kind of took a different route. You know, he's farming on owned land, he's farming on leased land. Maybe let's get to explore his journey and how he became the farmer that he is today, farming with livestock and a whole range of other commodities. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask our guest. Um, if there's something that you felt quite interesting and you want us to repeat in the next episode, in the next show, please feel free to do that. But yet again, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like every single conversation that you found inspiring, thoughtful, educational, and please feel free su to send out suggestions of what other topics you'd like to us to explore on the farming podcast. So today I'm joined by Ulerile Lecheto, a farmer in the Northwest, and let's get to explore his journey, his farming operations, and just learn how he goes about doing his business. Ulerile, thank you so much for joining us, man. How are you doing? I'm good on you, Mbali. Thank you for having me and, and thank you uh, to your viewers uh, on, on private property farming. Fantastic. So uh, you're in your car. It sounds like you're going somewhere or come from somewhere, um, you know, and typically people want to see farmers on their farms. So basically, um, tell us about what you farm and what does a typical day in your life look like? Okay, I farm with cattle, mostly it's Bonsmara and uh, mixed breed cattle. I also farm with sheep, uh, your white, white, white head doppers and your doppers. I also do chickens, your broilers and your, and your, and your layers. Also, I do vegetables and recently I've just started planting lucerne. I'm also doing lucerne. That's, that's the part of the crops that I'm doing. So yeah, I mean. Typically how my day looks like, you know, every day when you wake up on the farm, first thing, it's, it's do your boundaries. You check on the farm, what is happening, count the cattle, uh, check the water levels, and so on. It's an everyday thing. So that's, that's typically how my day, my day normally starts. The first thing that I do is, as part of my security, go around the farm, check if nothing happened overnight, count everything, count the cattle, count the sheep. That's just how my day starts. Wow, it sounds quite busy. And I mean, I heard cattle, bonsmara, and another breed. I heard uh, poultry, mm -hmm. which is day old and layers. And I heard vegetables as well as grain, which is lucerne. Why such yes. a diversified portfolio? What did you start off with? And why did you, did you decide to maybe uh, explore the different commodities? And how has that benefited you till today? You know, Bali, as much as we are cattle farmers, uh, most people don't understand or they tend to forget that for you to make money from a cattle, it takes you about 15 to six months. I'm, I mean, yeah, 15 to, uh, 15 to 16 months. Remember, a cattle gets pregnant for nine months and then you have still have to grow the calf for about, for about six, seven months. So you, you don't make money. Now, in that period of 15 to, to 16 months, you have to, you have to, You've got costs, you've got expenses that are happening every month. You've got staff to pay, you've got medication, you've got feed. So now, 
you have to do other commodities in farming so that they can supplement for in, for in the time being or during that gap where you are not making money from that cattle. So it's important that you have mixed farming so that they, they, they complement each other, they cover for each other those components. So that's, that's why I've got so many mixed up things. Even Lucerne, the one that I just said I'm planting, you must remember you, you also, you can't just rely on it. You, you, there's four months, there's a four month period in the year where you're not going to be making money from that Lucerne because during winter you can't cut Lucerne. So they, they just complement each other. That's why it's important for you to have mixed farming. You cannot just rely on cattle or else your business is going to suffer. You cannot sit for 16 months without making money on the farm. Mm, mm. But yes. is it true then one could say that, yes, Ulerile, I hear you. I'm a livestock farmer. I need to explore other, other avenues to, you know, cover the months where I'm not receiving cash flow. But to farm Lucerne, to deal with day olds and poultry, and to also farm with vegetables also requires money. So where am I getting this money from if a person wants to start diversifying? Ah, money is always a problem. But you know, another, another advantage, I'm sorry, just to add on to what I was saying previously. Another advantage is that the same Lucerne, you, it, it feeds my cattle. Yeah. I, obviously, I sell some of it, and then some I keep for myself for the winter months. Also, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with the poultry, I use for my bedding. I use sunflower, sunflower seeds. I also use uh, sunflower, I mean, not seeds. Sunflower seeds and 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 and, and peanut peanut shells, oh. so as bedding. Now the waste of 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 the chicken, I use it and I feed it to my cattle. So they 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 go hand in hand. So yeah. so now yes, it's very much capital intense, very 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 much. So that's why it's it's. I I I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not just doing farming hundred percent. I could say maybe I'm doing farming ninety percent. Then I've got small businesses that I do that 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 will put that, that I take money and put into my farming. So it's very capital intense. And mm -hmm. so far I've never received any farming from government. But I'm 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 not gonna wait. I'm just gonna with the little that I have, I'm just gonna keep on pushing and trying and trying. Yeah, I like that you um obviously bringing the reality into it because um, you know, I'm a farmer, yes, full time, but as I've been in the industry for the past six years, there are other things that I am doing within the agri sector to obviously bring income. And then obviously mm. you take that income and you re uh, redirect it or reinvest it within your business in the agriculture business so that it can grow. So um, yes. how did you come about with all these various initiatives? You know, like you're saying, one part of the business can support another and another and another, you know. Um, do you have to go seek expert advice that will tell you, you know, the bedding on the chickens can work as animal feed and vice versa? Sunflower that you're growing in your fields can work for your, your poultry. Um, how did you come about to learn all of that? I think the most important thing in Bali that we do as we, the most mistake that we make, we tend to forget that farming is a business. So now as a business, you want to make money. So you, 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 you must be driven by business. As much as there's passion and love that we put into farming, but the forefront of it must be the mind of business. Because if you're not going to have it like that, you, you, you can't farm for the love. I'm sorry to say that. Yes, our old grandfathers, like I, I took farming from my grandfather. My grandfather was farming for the love. But I can't. Times have changed. I, we have to farm for business. So it's, it's, it's driven by that. And a lot of research. I, 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 I research a lot. I've got mentors. I, I, I learn a lot. I'm always learning. Every day I learn something. So, mm -hmm. so, so it just, that knowledge just comes from that. Or that mindset just comes from that. From what I'm learning every day. It's research, going to school. Even now, I've, I've gone back to school. Most people will I, I get surprised when I tell them, by profession, I'm an auditor. I, I've never went to farming school. It's only now that I've gone to farming school. Mm. And what is it that you study yes. and why did you feel the need to go to school to study agriculture? Currently, I'm doing uh, through the Cernic Bonsmara group. There's, they've, there's, there's, there's an initiative that they're doing with APSA as for animal production. It's an 10-month course that they're teaching us about everything, about uh, feed, 
animal production, everything, farm management, everything. So that's that's what I'm doing. And it's it's very important that you always have to increase your knowledge. So that's 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 my passion. That is what is driving me. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I, yeah. I, I can you know, you said farming is not for passionate people or the passion just can't drive you, but I can definitely see the passion exuding from you, uh, Ole. Um, I just want to find out, you know, managing all these various operations within your whole business, right? Poultry, grain, uh, vegetables, as well as livestock. How important is it to have the right people on the farm? How, how are you getting it right? Obviously, you, you, you can't do this alone. Another, another advantage that I've had, I've got, there's this program that the Department of Land, of Agriculture and Rural Development have been doing. It's a program about, they give graduates, uh, recently the people that have just graduated, they give them, they, put, they bring them to your farm. So you, you, then they work with you for two years. And, 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 and so I've got, I've got some of those people on my farm that I've, 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 I've recently been given. So I'm working with them. Also, I've got my, my two uncles that I'm working with. So mm. it's not just a, a one-man show. I could never survive. I could yeah. never. Also, al also I, 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 I've got the help of my cooperative. We've got a cooperative called Bupirima Farming Corp. Okay. It's a group of about 13 young farmers where we, 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 we teach each other, we farm in, we farm in unity, we farm in, 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 in synchronization. We, 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 we farm together. Every month we get together, we do trainings, we invite people, we invite experts, either artificial insemination, other animal production, other anything. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a learning activity that we do every month. So mm -hmm. that's, those are my support structures. I, mm -hmm. the, like I said, I could never do it alone. I've got, I've got this different type of support structures. Yeah. And we just recently, yes. not so long ago, in one of the podcast episodes, spoke to a livestock farmer. And she expressed how she has to keep her farm tight, meaning close-knit. Um, just to give you an example, she doesn't accept visitors just willy-nilly because she's had um, uh, experiences where she's brought visitors on her farm who wanted to learn. There may, have pe there may have been people from the community like you have expressed, but she found that, you know, uh, from those initiatives, from the good of all her, her own heart, trying to teach other people um, and extend knowledge and information, she was then heavily affected by theft. So as a livestock farmer as well, and I mean, Bonsmala sounds like a very expensive breed to maintain. Um, how are you maintaining and managing security in and around your farm, over and above all these various people that you're working with? Um, how, are you, how are you keeping your farm and your livestock safe at the end of the day? Uh, Bali, unfortunately, uh, theft, it's, it's a reality that we live with. And you, you, you can put all mechanisms. You can put cameras, you can put tracking devices, you can do. You, wow. We just rely on God's mercy, to tell you the truth. You can put all mechanisms in place. Even your crops, they will steal. Even your cattle, everything, they will steal. So it's it's I, I can't say to you there's a mechanism. Besides that, that sometimes we do night patrols. Sometimes we, we every day we count the cattle on every camp we count them. So those are my only mechanisms that that that, that I'm doing. Other than that, I'm just relying on God and the ancestors. Jeez, thank you for that brutal honesty. And I mean, if somebody's hearing this, it's, they're gonna probably think, oh, farming just sounds like too much. I'm hearing Ole say, if you're a livestock farmer, you must manage your cattle, safety and security. Um, you know, yes, work with communities to uh, get some more information, upskill yourself. Furthermore, don't rely on one commodity, maybe niche, diversif uh, sorry, diversify, um, and not focusing on niching because of the time frames that it takes in farming. So if one is just hearing all of this and is feeling overwhelmed, why do you think people should then go into the agri-sector? It's important. Food security is important. Yeah. We have to, we, we, South Africa is not a food secured country. Africa on its own, it's not a food secured country. I mean, a continent. So we, we have to, there's no way that we will pro stop producing food. We, 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 we have to, we just have to. And mm. it's not easy. Just like any other industry, a musician will tell you it's not easy to be in the music industry, an, an engineer, everybody, nothing is easy. So we can never, 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 or be scared because it's not easy and i think 
another thing that we need to be to be honest. We need to be honest and 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 tell people the reality that farming is not just a quick cash scheme. Mm. It takes patience. It takes time. It's risky. It's yes, the benefits are there. Yes, there is money in farming. There is a lot of money in farming, but it 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 it's a lot of effort. So let's just be honest. I think we we need as farmers, we need to tell people the truth that this is. This is this is our day everyday challenges. You, how do you farm for like I've been farming with no funding? How how do you how do you do you go on? How do you go to bed knowing that you've put over two hundred cattle in 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 the fields and somebody might come and steal them? Mm. So it's 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 the realities that we need to tell people. Mm, mm. And what do you say to those people who believe that they need to be funded to start agri? You know, uh, because I get a lot of those. Mbali, I'm passionate about farming, but where can I find funding? I've got land at home, but where can I find funding? Um, and you try and educate people to say, start with what you have, you know, but people don't hear you well. Do you also get those type of comments and feedback from people? I mean, maybe let's learn from you. Uh, you said you are an auditor by profession. You have another business where you've reinvested. But for somebody that doesn't have that, um, and if funding is not the solution, how can they start? Mbali, I think first and foremost, nobody must believe that they deserve funding. Because first of all, government does not owe us anything. As much as government, it's, it's our tax, it's our tax, uh, taxpayers' money and everything. But we need to remove that entitlement mentality. Nobody is entitled to any funding and government does not owe us anything. I know it sounds uh, uh, bad or, 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 or brutal or what, but government does not owe us anything. So I started off with one cattle that I was given to by my grandfather. And I started farming on communion land. I, 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 that's, that's, that's how it started. Some people started on, on, on with their gardens. So mm. we need to tell ourselves and remove that mentality that, and, and that nobody owes us anything. We need to do it ourselves. That's, that's how most people are successful. For an example, you are a woman. You, 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 you not even have that big physique, but there you are. You go on your farm every day. You farm. Yeah. So, so you, 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 you see, that's what we need. That's what we need. People just need to take off that entitlement mentality. Not everybody, when you start farming, do not say, I want funding, I want to start farming. Mm. It's always good that government must find you in front. It's better for you to come to them and say, guys, I've got my, 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 my one hectare garden. Mm. Please, can you help me? It's better to say, I've got seed. Can you please give me fertilizer? Mm. But now, don't just go with nothing and say, I've got an idea, I want to farm. Please help me. <laughs> fund me that's that's wrong that's a very wrong mentality yeah Ole, just hearing your story it sounds like you are in a much privileged pos uh, position because you know we've had many other farmers in this podcast who say i'm alone in my community yes i work with my father but everybody else in and around my farming community are as old as my father for example so they would say i'm the only young person i'm the only female i am the only maybe black farmer in this community um with your journey, it's slightly different. So how are you guys able to have a great, successful community that is helping each other, sharing trade secrets, like you mentioned earlier on? Um, I don't know if that community is just in and around Dawu, or is it because you are in a small town? Maybe that's the advantage. But how are you guys getting it right where we can maybe learn and just start collaborating with one another? Okay. About, about my farming, our farming uh, cooperative, it's not just the guys from Taung. It's, it's, we, are, we, are, we come from a different, we come from a different area. We come from different areas. We've got guys from Khangesa, which is in the Freiburg areas. We've got one guy who's in Kuruman, which Kuruman falls under Northern, Northern Cape. We've got one guy who's in Zeros. How we started, it's just a group of, we, we didn't even know each other. Now, we, you must not farm in silo. That's what is killing us as black farmers. Oh, 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 oh. yes, and let, me, let me put it bluntly and say as black farmers. If you can see our, count, our white counterparts, they are forming in unity. They are farming in unity. Now, one of our, our, our main goals about this cooperative also is that next year we are having our very first ever uh, winner calf auction. 
We want to showcase that black farmers can produce good quality calves. Now, yeah. that's, that's, that's just how we do it. We always invite guests every month that, guys, come and, 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 and be with us. Take what, we, what we, we, are, we, we are trying to do. Also go and start your own cooperative there. We will help you. We will mentor you. We can help you with that, especially ladies. I, 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 I'm very passionate about women in farming. Honestly, that's, that's, that's one of my passion also. Yeah. So we, we always invite and say, guys, come together. Let's come together. We, uh, come learn. Maybe we spend, spend a weekend with us as we meet on a monthly basis. So that's, that's how we do it. It, it. It's possible. It can be done. And, yeah. and, and we started it from nothing. We started it from nothing, honestly speaking. Wow. Uh, just to sum it off and uh, maybe to close off our conversation, um, how, many, how many women farmers have you mentored? Or have you lost count? Or are you not counting anyway? It's just, do you just give time and make time to just help women farmers in and around your community? And maybe the, those that will maybe see this interview and say, I want to reach out to Ole. Um, and then they ask you, do you assist young women farmers or just women farmers in general? Yes, not just women farmers, <laughs> any, any farmer. Some can be older than me, some, 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 some can be younger than me. So now I, I assist and, and, and a lot. We've assisted, I've assisted a lot of women farmers. That's why I say, do not always say, Ole, hi, I'm a farmer. I want to, be, I want to do farming. Please help me. Please yeah. help me to get funding. I only, my first response is I've never had any fu any funding in my life. So so we do. I do help even 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 those that will see this podcast. Somebody can approach me and say, uh, "Ole, please, can you can you can you assist me? I will assist. I'll give information where I can." That's why we used to do farm spaces with the likes of Abo Ipileng, Abo Gubu, and we used to share a lot of knowledge. We still do that, and that's that's why we should always be willing to share knowledge. And you know another another thing that I, I would I would advise our our, our black farmers with Mbali, the, you you will be surprised that a lot of white farmers are always willing to share knowledge. To my surprise, a lot of white farmers they are always willing they are always sharing knowledge. So do, let a, you should not be afraid to approach and say you know what, Mr. Van der Merwe, I, I I would like to learn about one two three. Can can I please come and learn? They are always willing to share. Mm, mm. Well, thank yes. you so much, Ole. I won't take too much of your time. I think you've given us a mouthful. Um, I think what I enjoyed about this conversation is just he gave us the basics, as real as they are. You know, to say, yes, you're from a small town. You started without funding. Yes, farming is your passion. It is your business. You started with an, your uncle or great-grandfather giving you a cattle or a cow, and now you've converted that into a herd. It takes time. There will be challenges, there will be setbacks, financial and non-financial. You have to diversify so that you can get income and cash flow from various, various other um, uh, uh, business uh, operations. And also don't feel too bad by having a second job, you know, or a second business mm. that can mm. keep and maintain your, your personal expenses, your livelihood. But also if you have a surplus, redirect and reinvest that type of money into your farming operations because as much as farming is difficult there are opportunities to make it a successful and viable business that is profitable profitable at the end of the day and that's just summing up what you've just said and i think um the way you've just given to us um is just great because you really put it in such a way that we could understand really what farmers get up to and what farmers get f faced with, face with uh, on a daily basis. So thank you so much for your insights. Um, and I wish you all the success with all your operations, more so with the Lucerne, because you did say it's something that's new that you just started. Yes. No, thank you very much, Mbali, uh, for the opportunity. And uh, it's, it's, it's always good to, 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 to connect with, 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 with other farmers and with mm -hmm. the likes of you guys and be given this such platforms. I, it's such a privilege, honestly. It's yeah. such a privilege and much appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Ola. It's actually a privilege to also have you because farmers are very busy 
we are business people entrepreneurs but it's also a privilege to have you so thank you so much if you just missed this conversation right. that was ole um he's a farmer all the way in the northwest Daung, uh mainly a livestock farmer as i gather but has also ventured into other commodities doing lucerne uh poultry as well as vegetables all trying to maintain the 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 business um, especially afloat when you know the cattle's um, are even going through mating periods, etc., where there's downturn in terms of a cash flow. And I think what you should get from this conversation is that you cannot farm in a silo. You have to work with the community, mm. whether it's security, whether it's training, whether it's upskilling yourself as, a, as an individual, as a farmer. You have to work as a collective because there's many gems and uh, uh, trade secrets that you can get from other farmers, experiences that they've had, and maybe you can apply that into your business. So I hope this conversation was insightful as it was to me please keep supporting the farming podcast brought to you by private property and feel free to put in any suggestions of topics that you feel that we should cover right here on the podcast take care